if I had written a book in 1913 or 1914 called the capital in the 20th century, uh, I don't know I could, how I could have predicted what would have happened. One of the big lessons is that the reduction of inequality in the 20th century in developed countries was a lot due to major shocks like World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, and also the new social and fiscal institutions and policies that were put in place after these shocks and that were refused by the elite before these shocks. And, and uh, today we see, uh, you know, in the past 20 to 30 years, a tendency to return to levels of inequality, which are still lower than a century ago. The general conclusion of the book is that we need a strong uh, public and democratic institution in order to ensure uh, that uh, wealth and income inequality does not return to the extreme level uh, which we had a century ago and, and which were not really useful for growth because above a certain point uh, when inequality gets really too extreme uh, it's, it leads to less mobility and it's not, not really useful for growth. There are forces going in every direction. There are also forces that can lead to a reduction of inequality, in particular the diffusion of skills, knowledge, education can reduce inequality both between countries, this is what we have today with emerging countries catching up with the richest countries, and this can also work within countries, but this requires a very inclusive educational institution which we don't uh, always uh, have. So everything can happen, which force will prevail really depends on the policies and institutions that we choose. So there are different possible futures, different ways to organize capitalism. One very good and interesting aspect of the publication of the book is that it induced uh, us to work more on emerging countries. And in many uh, emerging countries, including in Brazil, in Mexico, in, in Taiwan, in Korea, we could obtain better access to fiscal data after the publication of the book. I think in many emerging countries, uh, the lack of transparency about income and wealth uh, you know, can be a, a problem uh, uh, for, for, uh, for the development of the country. In China, you have uh, an income tax, but there is no uh, income tax statistic. And I think publishing the data at the local level would be a way to, to, uh, to, to fight corruption. And the publication of the book, in some cases, uh, you know, has helped to put pressure on government uh, in order to publish some of this data. Well, I hope the book will be remembered not so much for the book itself, but for the new research that it has contributed to stimulate. So I think the data collection will continue and probably the conclusions that we will get in 2050 or 2100 will be quite different from the predictions that we can make uh, today. The main lesson is that politics matters, institutions matter, and I am completely unable to predict the institutional change that will happen in the coming century in China or Brazil or European Union or in the US. But in any case, what I know is that looking at this broad set of historical and comparative and international experience can help us to make better policy choices for the future.